Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at all the cool new features in Ableton Live 11. So I am not going to be doing one of those weird videos where I pull up the website and just run my mouth. I actually do have a beta version of Live 11. So I'm really excited because they've added two features that were on my personal wish list for additions to Ableton's ecosystem. Now, that being said, if you guys are new to this channel, I'm a Logic user through and through. I've been using Logic for probably 10 years. I've been using Ableton for maybe three. I've always really liked Ableton, but there were a couple things that were integral to my workflow that weren't in Ableton that were in Logic. So I would say I probably used 70, 30, 60, 40. But now that those two new features have been added into Live, I don't know, I could see myself using Ableton a lot more. So I'm not gonna lie, the very first thing I did when I opened up Ableton Live 11 for the first time a couple weeks ago was I decided, hey, I need to test out this comping. So I plugged it into a guitar and I went for it. So I'm gonna show you how the comping works in Ableton because if you're like me and you use other, another DAW primarily like Logic or Pro Tools, whatever it might be, you're probably interested in how this works rather than just knowing it has it. So I will say, that it is quite an elegant solution to comping. I'm very impressed with how this is obviously Ableton's first try at comping and they did a great job. There's a couple things that actually put it above other DAWs in my opinion, and we'll look at that right now. So this might, to Ableton users, just look like three or four different clips of guitar that I spliced together to make one coherent, cohesive clip. But it's actually making use of the comping feature. So let's play it real quick. <laughs> All right, so if we open up our takes, we can do that two ways. We can right click on the track here and we can select show take lanes or we can hit command option in U on Mac or control alt and U on PC. And that will open up our different lanes. Now we can select just one lane at a time by selecting each lane and then clicking on the speaker icon or just hitting the speaker icon directly will change it. And then we can listen to just that take. So I pitched this take down off screen and I let me let me pitch that back up. So let's get back to just listening to the normal take. And then here's our second take. So the ending of this take was garbage. So I'm definitely going to use the ending of the first take. So here's how you can piece together one cohesive take from these different lanes. I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard to bring up the pencil, and I'm going to use the first chord from here. I think I wanna use the second chord from here. I wanna use the third and fourth chord from the first take. Let's take a listen. And just like that, we've made use of a very easy to use comping system in Ableton. So let's mute this now. Actually, before we do that, let me go back to one other thing. So what I find very interesting and very unique about this is with each lane, you have the normal controls that you'd have for any clip or audio region in Ableton. So I can transpose this one independently from our other lane. I can warp it differently. I can do anything that I'd normally do to an actual track with a region on it or just a region within a track and it's a part of a comp. So I think that's pretty unique. I don't know of any other DAW that has that exact system. You can also use the new comping feature with MIDI tracks. So here is a contact piano that I played and I played a couple different versions of it and it's in two different lanes. And here's the other one. So if you're like me and you like noodling on the keys and you like to, you know, see what happens when you play something slightly different three or four times, you're going to love this MIDI comping feature in Ableton. So you probably noticed that I have a new device down here on this piano track. This is one of the new devices. It's the hybrid reverb. And I got to say, this is hands down my favorite reverb now in Ableton are the stock reverbs that come with Ableton. It just sounds really good. It's like a mix between a... Uh, kind of a fab filter reverb vibe with a little bit of Valhalla mixed in. And it actually is reminiscent to one of my favorite reverbs of all time because I'm a Logic user, uh, the Space Designer reverb, which is convolution based. So the idea behind the hybrid reverb is you can mix an algorithm, which you can see here, we have these different algorithms, Dark Hall, Quartz, Shimmer, Tides, and Prism with a convolution reverb response. 
And the results have just been incredible. I mean, I went through some of the presets and they all just worked well. So I'll do that now. And you can blend easily between the convolution only and the algorithm. And of course, anywhere in between. So if we want to change the algorithm, I like prism from what I've heard so far. All right, let's try, let's try uh, reversed reversal protocol. So that's more effect-based than just your standard reverb. And that's just making use of the algorithm. So some of the presets don't even use the convolution. Let's go back to the piano hall. I thought that sounded really good with this piano. All right, so let's move on now to another feature that I'm really excited for and I don't know why other DAWs don't have this. I know FL Studio has it, and it just always blown my mind that other DAWs don't have it. So if you are like me, like let's say, I'll, I'll... all right, so I got a little sidetracked there with the reverb. I want to double back now to one of the other features that I think are going to make a lot of people happy, and that is the scale feature now in the clips, the mini clips. So what we can do is we can actually assign a scale to a clip and we have tons of different scales. Of course, we have, you know, C, C sharp, et cetera, going all the way up to B. But we have tons of vari variations of scales, major, minor, Dorian, different modes. We have some world and ethnic scales as well. So what these do is they're going to basically make it easier to pencil in melodies, chords, or just fine notes in key if you're struggling, right? So let's just go and choose, we'll do F sharp minor. And we, we can see over here, we still have the fold button. But we also have the scale, which is going to fold the keys that we see to the scale we've selected. So if I select scale, the only notes that I see and that I have access to are in the scale. So if we bring up our pencil here and we start making some chords, right? I literally can't actually make anything incorrect here, which is a pretty cool concept if you're just getting started with music. So there is a chord progression that I just penciled in very quick, copy and paste, using the new feature. And it's not a chord progression that I necessarily think I'd play that readily on a keyboard, but it works. There's no wrong notes. We have these new randomized tools. We can randomize the velocity and we can randomize the probability, the probability that it's going to actually hit or be present. So we have three different ways to kind of humanize this loop or any loop for that matter. We have our randomize button here where we can actually just click it and it will just randomize the different elements, the velocity and probability of those hits occurring. All right, I can hit it again. And we can fine tune the amount that we get with a slider. And good news for the MPE lovers out there, for the people who have an MPE ca a capable keyboard. In the clip view for any uh, MIDI track, we can go to this last tab here, and this is the note expression. So if you obviously you have an MPE controller, you'll see the note expression show up. But even if you don't, and you're using an MPE able device in Ableton, like Wavetable, Simpler, or Sampler, you can actually basically automate in those expressions, which is pretty cool. All right, so like I mentioned earlier in the video, this version of Ableton that I have installed doesn't have all of the new devices, but it doesn't have it does have two of what I think will be two of the more popular new devices in the update. The Spectral Resonator, which we see right here, and our Spectral Time, which we'll check out in a second. So Spectral Resonator is a crazy cool plugin. Uh, Flume is going to love these. So you can actually do a lot of crazy stuff with it. Here it is on the guitar that we heard a couple minutes ago. So what it's basically doing is it's tearing apart the incoming audio or MIDI, depending on how you route it, 
and it's breaking it into partials, hence the spectral side of it. And then it's going to shift, uh, stretch, blur, and do some crazy stuff to it that adds that really interesting sound. So if you've ever if you've ever messed around with spectral synthesis, it, some of the quality of the sound you just heard should be familiar. Now you can actually sidechain with MIDI into it, so that allows you to actually play chords through it as well as melodies. So let's load up the spectral time now. And let's try doing freezing and fading. And let's turn off dripping gra grains. Right, like I said, Flume's gonna love this stuff. Let's do delay downshift now. And now I'm going to turn on dripping grains with the, or I'm sorry, the spectral resonator with the spectral time. It's pretty cool. It's pretty nuts. All right, so in terms of what the spectral time's doing, it's, it's still working obviously in the spectral domain, so partials are coming into play, but it's more delay-based. You hear those echoes, there's more you know typical frequency shifting going on, and you have this cool freeze function and I'm going to turn that on right now when I play it again. Which is going to be a lot of fun for sound design as well as for obviously automating into it and just trying to get some weird, cool ambient results. I think people are going to love these two new devices. All right, so that's going to sum up this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can post those below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you guys aren't subscribed to our channel, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button. The support really does mean a lot to us. And if you guys haven't ever checked out our website, echosoundworks.com, Definitely head on over there. There's a ton of free content, samples, loops, and presets. And of course, there's some premium sound sets and sample packs as well. And lastly, if you guys use Instagram, consider giving us a follow. We run a lot of contests, giveaways, and promotions on that platform. And I think you guys will like what we're doing over there. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.